Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, Team I fix it all. Today's topic is a frost-free water spigot or uh, yeah, some I forget the technical name they call these, but um, they call them I think frost proof or something like that. But the reason why they're frost-proof is because they're um, designed in such a way where if you use these properly, like I did not, then what happens is this part is sticking out of your home, whether it's the foundation, your cinder block, or the side of the house. This part here is sticking out that's your garden hose hookup and your knob that the theory is there is no water in this all the way from up here that's the there this is all open air when you turn the spigot off and that's true because and we've got a repair to do here by the way um before you do any repairs on these, you might want to know how they work. So, installed in my home, this pipe passes through a cinder block wall underneath the crawl space. There is a fitting waiting for me to screw this into. I had my plumber's tape right there. Tighten it up, position it, and it's ready for use. Well... I had an older version of this that had been giving me trouble for many, many years, and I just kept on Band-Aid fixing, Band-Aid fixing, and one day I thought, well, let me just replace that. Well, that became an adventure because I needed to, in order to replace this, there isn't a cutoff valve upstream of this, meaning the PVC pipe that feeds this, there isn't a cutoff valve anywhere. So I kind of postponed it, put it off, and then um, ended up installing a quarter turn cutoff valve on the PVC pipe, pipe that feeds this. Because um, the only way to do a repair on this is I have to cut water off to the entire house dink around for however long it takes me to swap the old one in out for the new one understanding how the plumber who did the plumbing uh, connected things making sure i had everything perfect i didn't have a conflict with this pipe size or this thread pattern compared to what i was seeing underneath the house because there was a a section of pvc pipe that came to a cast iron fitting to another cast iron fitting that matched the old frost free fitting and so recently I just um, I got around to doing the repair on this because I really need my garden hose around back where I've got a spool about 300 foot of garden hose I recently got around to cutting the PVC pipe installing gluing in a quarter turn ball valve now I'm home free. The, the house is not disrupted. I can install this at my leisure. So here's the problem. Back in February, I installed this brand new. And uh, of course, you can imagine I had my garden hose hooked up, had the valve on, water's going out the hose to what I need it to do. And I walked up and I turned this off. And I went about my life. I just defeated the purpose of this. Because my garden hose was still hooked up. When I got done doing what I needed to do, I, I turned this the, the garden hose nozzle off. Then I walked up to this, turned this off. And I left the garden hose hooked up. What that did was... 
I didn't care too much about the garden hose because it's a pretty expensive garden hose that has an expansion rate and contraction rate to where if the garden hose froze, it's fine. Usually what I do is um, in the winter time, I'll walk the hose. I'll drain it completely. But in this particular time, I turned the nozzle off on the end of the hose. I walked up and turned this off. And then I went over to the nozzle on the end of the garden hose and I cracked it open. What I should have done was disconnected the garden hose here and water from this point underneath the house through the wall and out to the world. From here to here it would have been empty. But instead I left the hose hooked up. And as a result, um, the way the, ho the hose is oriented, the hose is higher than this. So water stayed in the hose and in this pipe, and it froze. Now, I'll show you what happened. These are designed to, if they freeze, they will swell and burst. Let's take a look at what you see, what we can see here. There is a crack you get something to point with dang it and um it was opened wide up wide open but i've hammered it closed i've tapped it with a, a small ball peen hammer but it's slit all the way through there i don't know if the light is helping at all let's see what we can do here this might be better Let's see what we can come up with. Well, that's terrible. Anyway, there's a break from here to here. I wish the camera, if I zoom in... I'm about ready to say focus. Right there. Our objective is to repair that. And it was opened up like this. So what I did was I got my uh, small ball peen hammer and gently was tapping it around, working that metal back around until it closed back up. And it is. And what I'm going to do is add flux, torch, and solder this. And then I've got myself some scrap copper tubing that was in a similar diameter. Use my pipe cutter here to cut off a section right here. Cut that piece off of there. Then I used a hacksaw and cut this patch out. And I've already got the pipe marked where this needs to lay. So my first step is I'm going to heat and solder the slit that I've closed up. I've tapped it back closed again. I'm going to solder that. Next step is I'm going to heat this up and add solder to the back of this and then I'm gonna try to figure out a way to lay this on here add more flux probably tie wire it heat it up again and let the solder on my patch connect to the solder on the pipe and then it's gonna be um, repaired 
But before I go through any repairs, you got to understand a few things about how these things work. Because if you start laying heat to this, you have uh, rubber parts in here. You got a rubber part up in here, and you've got a gasket here. Um, how this works is, let's see if we can see this. If I turn that knob, it opens up and then it closes. So the gate for the water flow is at this brass fitting. Now from the factory, this brass fitting is shaped in such a way that it's inserted into this copper tubing. It's probably pre-tinned with um, lead solder or maybe silver solder type base but it's inserted in the the copper tubing is heated and flux is added um, I'm saying it backwards but this is solder connection so the heat that I apply <clears throat> to my work area right here is awfully close to this so the way I do my repair is I'm going to attempt to add my heat right here while this is mounted in a vise right here I'm going to add my heat in here let it drift up the pipe and that will heat this area up to allow me to braise the solder on but before we go to adding any heat like I mentioned earlier was there's a seal here and there's also a seal here because if you think about it and it's normal used uh, situation Water's turned off. We're closed off back here. There's a rubber seal. And all of this is draining out. All of this will be air. Watch this. You'll see. I'm going to disassemble this so you can understand what's happening. Excuse the chainsaw in the background. See what's going on here? such a skinny tube but in such a large pipe right now this thing is now completely um, empty because there is a fitting machined in such a way on the end up there that allows this rubber seal here with a single screw and that's what causes your drips if this seal is not um, good shape it's going to allow water to sneak past this into the pipe into the pipe and drip 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 that's a bad thing for the winter time too especially if you're counting on this thing to not freeze again my situation was I used the garden hose in February I walked up and turned this off and left the garden hose connected and the garden hose is at a higher elevation than this spigot therefore it allowed water to stay inside the area that's supposed to be empty and it got cold and froze and it, and it happened to have froze and burst right there so I'm not going to add any heat with this on by the way, there's another seal up here. They've changed the design on that. Um, the older one was a totally different design. There's my screw. There's my handle. It's kind of squared off. I can feel that 
this has a nice friction to it when I spin it and it it looks like they don't add seals here anymore inside here a rubber cone shape the seal would look be shaped side profile be shaped just like this and it would be sitting slid on right here and it would be kind of cone shaped which would mate to the inside of this apparently what they're doing now is they are it's a washer uh, they are injecting uh, silicon or something silicone in here or something because that's real feels pliable it's like they have a, a device that they install and then they inject an epoxy uh, not an epoxy a, uh, a rubbery I call it, it feels like silicone because I can massage it with a screwdriver just a little bit and get it to give that's the front seal for your handle when it's tightened here let me think now yeah when this is installed there I'm bottomed out on my gate there and if I turn it oops you can see how it backs away as I turn allowing water to sneak around and head toward the spigot um, but with this all together, this, this seal right here is also very important. And if it ever started to fail on you, it would be giving you a symptom of um, leaking around the handle right here. And I thought about, well, how do I fix that one day if it becomes an issue? Uh, to me, it looks like I would just simply take this off chip out all the rubber here install uh, something in there that shimmed it a little bit and used silicone in here uh, probably a, a really uh, not the real rubbery type but a, a type that's somewhere a hybrid between epoxy and silicone I don't know what that product is, but anyway, this this uh, this whole thing right here in the old versions was an actual rubber that you took out and replaced. So with that being said, um, how these things work is important because if you have one of these and you do what I did, you risk blowing out your quote-unquote frost-free. They are frost-free if you properly interact with them don't just leave your garden hose hooked up and turn the spigot off you got to disconnect your garden hose from here that'll allow this whole thing to drain out and that's where I messed up so now that we know how it works I need to get things dang it come back here washer with the front seal and with the handle. Now I've eliminated all of the parts that will be damaged by the heat I'm going to be applying. Uh, but before I apply heat I need to make sure that I'm uh, round up here because I've been tapping on it with a ball peen and just eyeballing its circularness but I can almost see it looks it feels a little it looks it looks and feels a little fatter up here than it is from here on down I want to peen that with my ball peen hammer I want to tap it out to um, let me calibrate so this is a somewhat of a 
circle right there. I can feel a little bit of friction as I turn. And as I go up here, I'll be able to identify high spots as I turn the, the swelling of the water. You know, when it froze up to ice, it deformed and malshaped, uh, misshaped this. So what I want to do is just rotate this around and learn where my high spots are. And what the hell's going on? It's, I thought I had high spots. Looks like I'm almost good to go. Need to recalibrate here. I'm right over top of the split right now and it's pretty close. Okay, well, I'm not going to tap that. I'm not going to do what I said. Now I've got this patch here set up and it's going to lay right approximately, well, exactly there. And you can see what's happening. Well, let me get this in the vise here. I'm going to set it up in this vise that I've got rigged up. So, and the reason why I've got this set up the way it is is because I want to add heat. And uh, I want to be able to get this and this to agree with the idea of adding heat below the split and let the heat rise out. Uh, I, I don't want to turn, I don't want to lay it on the workbench and be doing this. These flames have a tendency to go out if you turn it upside down and then land it like this. It's kind of goofy. I don't want to burn my workbench. I think it might be better if I just set up the way I'm getting ready to do. So hang tight. We're back. I'm going to heat her up now. Seems like I'm in a decent spot. That's water cooking off. solder now and figure out which one I want to use, whether I want to use the thin stuff or the thick stuff. I'll probably start with the thin. Add a little bit of flux here. Right along the crack. Doing good. Try to turn my heat down a little bit if I can. Let's see if that's going to take. Almost like there's too much heat on it. I mean, too much. Um, it's not hot enough. I had to get a brush. I need a bit more 
flux. You cannot solder people without flux. You have to have flux. It's kind of like when you weld and you peck all the slag off. You've got to have a way to get that slag off before you continue welding. Otherwise you don't have a good bond between your material you're trying to solder and um, uh, the material you're trying to weld and the welding rod. I think I've got it. The technique I'm using with a brush is probably something you've never seen before. But what I'm trying to do is profile this solder so that it doesn't interfere with my patch that I need to add. I'm going to turn the heat off and work with this a little bit. I think that has got it. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna let this cool down, and then we'll restart. All right, we're back. So you can almost see where the crack was. But there's a discoloration in there, and that's uh, stuff you have to clean out with alcohol. And uh, <clears throat> due to COVID, this kind of alcohol is pretty easy to find. I would say you should stockpile up on some of this if you can find it. 91% uh, pre-COVID, you were hard-pressed to find 70% alcohol. But this is like in Dollar General and all that. This is the cat's meow for electronics work and soldering and also medical. Medical, if I mispronounced it. So the same brush I was uh, using, not the brush that I was using on the with flux. Um, this brush right here that I was kind of smoothing out the solder, I'm going to use to clean this up. and get rid of any signs of that flux. Or any byproducts or what have you. Let's have a look at that crack. Okay, so it is sealed up. Yeah, something goofy looking in there. goofy looking happening in there. Let me get a uh, another, another thing, maybe a little wire brush. I want to take a look at something. <clears throat> I think I need to rake that stuff out with a wire brush. So I got one more thing to do. I got to put this patch on. Has a decent evaporation rate. Okay. Yeah, it's 100% sealed up. So there you go. Okay. So I may or may not need this anymore. I'm going to be uh, tinning this up next. But first let me... Now, I'm going to be pulling a vacuum on this too once I'm done just to see if, if there's any uh, leaks. 
So let's go ahead and move on to getting this patch quote unquote tinned. You want to tin it with solder. I don't know how the hell I'm going to heat that thing up. I'm going to have to hold. <clears throat> hmm. Arr, I didn't plan for this. Let me see. Derby dooby doo, what do I have? I've got this. A big old socket. <clears throat> it might fall in. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Let me try this. That'll be good enough. All right, I'm gonna add some flux on the inside of that. Heat it up. And just start laying a layer of solder on it. There we go. And it looks like I'm gonna end up being where I don't wanna be. Maybe I can hold it up like this. Yeah, I could probably do that. If I hold it like this. Get it hot. I might use the big solder on this. I'm watching the flux and I'm watching the bubbling that occurs and then I'm going to come in with my solder well, this is working like no see if I can smear that yeah, I just want that to happen. Stay still. There we go. I'm probably going to have to heat this like I didn't want to do. And calluses work. What I just did there was get rid of the puddle of solder. And I should have added some more flux. I got rid of the puddle of solder that was happening. That dang, it's hot. Maybe I should wear a damn glove. heat again. I want to get uh, solder all over this.
There we go. We are tinned. There we go. Silver and copper. All tinned up and ready to go. It's hot as hell. Okay, let that cool down for a minute. Hang tight. Let's see what we can do about cleaning this up now that it's cooled off. Um, when you solder, um, generally you don't use a brush to smear your solder like I was doing, but I was trying to advance coat everything and keeping the heat on while you're doing that should level out all the solder again. You don't want any puddles. In this particular task, I don't want any puddles. It should feel just as round on the inside as it is on the outside. I don't want to have a high spot here. Um, but when you're soldering, your your uh, your connection should have a mirror shine to it, uh, reflective. If it's dull, it's a cold solder joint. <clears throat> see what we can come up with here getting decent light reflection off of this so it's highly reflective no uh, Puddles, side profile. Or edge, I mean. So now I'm ready to move on to the next step. Let me figure out a way to... Uh, where the other glove go? Figure out a way to move over to this now. And fit this onto here and make it stationary and uh, need some tie wire hang tight all right found me a piece I'm gonna put this right where I'm supposed to I had this pipe marked on either end where this patch needs to lay <clears throat> And a little bit of flux. Oh, dang it. Long brush. Cross contamination. There we go. So, um, they used to be called MSDSs, but I guess today they call them SDSs. Uh, yeah, Flux has a irritative, 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 irritative um, characteristic on your skin. Plus, when it's heated up, it lets off a, a gas and all of that. Uh, I'm open ventilated enough here. Of course... Always, when you're doing this kind of work, do like I am and suit up with a hazmat suit, full face shield, earplugs, all kinds of protection, and all that good stuff, because it's very important. It is, actually. Um... The center over that, right where it's at, it's right there, and center over it. Make sure. And wipe that damn flux off of my shorts. Get this tie wire on. And 
there at home, we'll do that. Let me see if I can get my pre-bend out of the way. There we go. And of course I got it started like I'm left-handed, which I'm not. You don't want to sit here and watch me struggle with this wire. Hang tight. Looks like everything came out fine. Got my patch on. I'm fluxed up. And, uh, ready to go. This thing's situated. I want it. Being careful with this little vise. It's a handy little vise. My son got it for me for Christmas one year or Father's Day or birthday or something. So here's the plan, Stan. We're going to paint brush on some flux on the outer perimeter, add some heat, add some solder, and then we'll vacuum test it. The idea here is that I've got to uh, I've got two surfaces facing each other that are soldered and cleaned with alcohol and then fresh new flux applied. The idea here is I'm going to go around the perimeter and while the heat is on the inside facing solder um, the, the, the solder that's on the patch and the solder that's on the pipe are going to fuse together. And additionally, I'm doing a picture frame solder joint. I sure the hell hope this wire doesn't take solder. It shouldn't. It's steel. But it is tin coated. If you have something that is tin coated, it is highly likely it will take solder. Also, the flux that I'm using is a paste flux. It's more manageable to me. Uh, when I was in the Navy, we always used liquid flux. Kept it in a syringe because we did a micro miniature or um, circuit board repair. I don't even know if they still do, do that in the Navy or not. I was aviation electronics. But um, liquid flux to me was easier to work with and handle but paste flux if you, you don't have to worry about it tipping over and it does the same job it's uh, necessary you always got to keep flux in your recipe of soldering have a component that needs soldered add a teensy I'm adding a lot of flux here that's a big job but normally it just takes a little dabble do on each resistor leg or whatever and uh, come in with your heat and when you see that solder come to a bubble I mean when you see the flux coming to a bubble go in with your solder and back off it allows you to keep um, it'll flux actually allows you to reduce the amount of time you are using and applying heat from your soldering iron on an electronics part if I have solder on and I'm doing a resistor and I've got the resistor placed and set and I've got a dab of solder there I'm gonna be like this and I'm off the component if you don't have flux you're gonna be like this and then you gotta kinda of wait for that flux to walk along the solder run of the PCB the circuit card or walk the leg of the resistor you've stayed on 10 times longer without flux and when you get done your joint is going to be a dull finish the joint needs to be mirror shiny got to have flux got to have flux same with wires when you want to do a splice you got to use flux flux is an acid that removes surface corrosion 
preparing your two surfaces you're trying to bond together preparing the surface with a clean working area to accept the uh, different types of solder available like silver solder makes it compatible for a good connection when that compatibility is achieved the solder will talk to you it will have a mirror finish another symptom of a dull finish on solder is you didn't add enough heat you might have flux and you may have solder and you just did not have high enough heat so I've got this patch facing me mostly I'll be uh, worrying over the heat that I'm applying in the same spot so much should be okay this will be a pretty lengthy endeavor here if it gets too long I'll pause the video and keep chooching along I want to show you what I'm trying to achieve here <clears throat> there's a pretty decent plane there I'm going to be visually watching uh, you can't even see me hmm There we go. I'm going to be visually watching this uh, <clears throat> Here's a little solder. Watching the flux to see when it comes to a boil and it's already there. <laughs> man, oh man. Turn that heat down a little bit. So I can get my angle of the dangle better. That might be better. I know that if I add, you know, as I'm adding heat, this whole thing is heating up. If solder takes to the top up here, then I know I'm good to go to continue all the way around. It'll heat up in a minute. I'll pause for the sake of the video size just for a second to let this heat up. Okay, we're back. Not sure where all this smoke is coming from. It might be that flux wicking down. And it's taking solder. What it's doing right now is, even though I, I have a piece shaped properly, a patch, this solder is actually sneaking under the patch as well. Whoa. It's not cooperating very well. I need to add some flux.
got to get in there quick before your flux evaps off. Oh, I know what's happening. Dang it. Use the bigger saw. It might take longer. I think I need to little, add a little bit have a brush with flux all the time. Brush in with solder. There we go. It's all about the technique. It isn't gonna look, isn't gonna look pretty. Lost my flame. Flux allows you to uh, create a good surface connection. I know I keep saying that, but it cleans both metals before you add the solder. It's looking perfectly fine. Losing a lot of solder here too, but it's quite all right. Yeah, that's what the heat is. The smoke is from the flux. All right, turn the heat off. You can tell your copper tubing is getting warm when it starts to discolor and change into the blues and the greens like an oil slick or what have you. Um, I'm going to go cool this off. Hang tight. Actually, it's still smoking. I, I wanted to go cool it off. Um, in this particular instance, if you can get your head around the idea that this is super hot and then I go to put it in cold water, it'll actually, um, more, the, the copper tubing is expanding because it's heating up and I have a patch that has expanded and the solder has joined the two surfaces. If I cool this off too quickly, I could create a hairline crack in the solder. Because the solder is quite technically much softer than the copper, but strong enough to bond things together. Uh, so what I'll probably do is uh, look left, look right, go in the house if the wife's not looking, turn the hot water on, and cool this off with hot water. That's the best approach. Or if you've got time, just let it air, air cool down and get it to room temperature slowly. Um, um, I wanted to make that point because it would be wrong of me right now to take this outside and dunk it in some cold water container. I would I would always wonder if that connection was compromised due to that quick cool down. All right, be right back. Okay, I examined uh, I examined the um, patch and there's some areas I don't like and. Um, it's, I rearranged my little setup here to have the patch in the more horizontal orientated position because this uh, flux becomes liquid. It was so vertical, a lot of the solder was running away. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do here is 
um, build up the outer perimeter a little better. There's about three areas I saw that if I was... <clears throat> I feel like it's not a good connection in a couple of spots. What I have is the patches on top here. And I'm going to come in with my solder. That's the small stuff. I'll use the big stuff on this particular task. And I will add solder along the perimeter one more time. Uh, because I believe um, I've got a decent connection now, but I'm not happy with it. So, first step, you got to add flux. But I'm going to heat first, and I'm going to jump between flux and solder. So I need my brush prepped for that. So there's my brush. There's my flux. I've got there. Start heating. Oh, by the way, that vice grip isn't just to hold the pipe. It's my crude attempt at a heat sink. The theory is that the um, heat will take a left turn and go up this steel. This should stay a little cooler down here. I want to stay off of this factory fitting if I can. So, um, let me begin to add some... First I want to do a test and see if the solder is melting. Yep. I'll add a little bit of flux. I'll work on this side. I'm not putting... I'm, I'm putting heat on like the 6 o'clock position of the pipe. So the heat comes around because when I approach with the solder, if I accidentally pass into the flame, it's going to prematurely melt my solder. There we go. Let's see if I need flux up here or not. Nope, that's taken. Very well. And... Yeah, so that, that side of the pipe is almost cool as a cucumber. This vice grip is wicking the heat toward me. Still heating the six o'clock position of the tubes, the tubing. Pause that, and I'll be right back. Let it cool down. Okay, we're back. Um, <clears throat> got a little bit ahead of myself. I was snipping the uh, wire off. It appears like the wire has tried to attach itself. But I'm going to gently try to roll it off. And assess the risk here. If any at all. Oh. Take a look at that. It's not a big deal. Okay. So now I'm paint with some alcohol. I'll get ready to get to get rid of the glove. <clears throat> Dang it. All right. 
right, well, screw it. Wrong brush. Bring that up some. I just dulled my finish on my solder, by the way. In other words, it, it wasn't really shiny and mirror-y, but the wire brush, that's a wire brush I'm using. I was trying to dig in and get some of the valleys of flux out of there. Yeah, that's bonded. That's all completely bonded. Uh, shop rag. There we go. Alright. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So there we go. Let's see what that looks like. And a different perspective. So now let's vacuum test it. You gotta be able to depend on this to hold water. And pressure most yeah, pressure. Water pressure. And actually the water pressure, I don't know what I was. Huh. Well, I don't know what I'm thinking. I, I won't have water pressure up to here. I'll only have it right up to here. Huh. Yeah, I won't. I'll have water pressure here, but as soon as I open the spigot, the only time water pressure will be experienced is if I turn the garden hose nozzle off. And that pressure will build backwards into here. Yeah, that's going to be way more than plenty. Um, but I want to make sure I don't have a leak. So I've already got a little device here rigged up. Now how do we... Uh, We reinstall everything. That's how I figured I was going to do this. Tighten that up. Hang tight. I had to go to my other vise over here. Okay. A little screw there. Come on, flathead, where'd you go? I just had me one. There it is. Oh, damn. It's not even a flathead. It be a Phillips. Let's tighten that down because from the factory, everything in here is loose as a brand new unit. So I should be able to, since I'm sealed off on that end, I should be able to pull my vacuum from right here. Uh, 
This is a vacuum pump automotive stuff. Um, that's because my hand wasn't sealed up against the little job I have here. That's a spark plug boot with another piece of vac uh, rubber hose to another piece of rubber hose. And I'm supposed to be able to spread that out on this. And of course I can't. Thank God I gotta adapt it one more time. I do believe. Yeah, hang tight. Okay, we're back. I figured stuff out. So let's see if you can see that. I got my vacuum pump. I got one of these cut off valves down here. I'll make sure the zoom isn't jacked up on this thing. That's a little better. That way you can see everything going on. There we go. So I got one of these dinky little two-way cutoff valves. Both valves are off. Move some of these subject matter out of the way. Because right now the only thing we're concerned with is is it fixed? So I've got my Right now, if I'm spigot is closed, I'm using this as like a cutoff valve down here. Um, what I want to do is pull vacuum the full length of the tube. Well, if my spigot is closed, I can only pull vacuum from here back. So I have to open my spigot. That exposes the entire tube to the vacuum pump. And these guys are closed in a closed position. Oh, that's open. Close, close. Yep, they're in closed position. And this is open. I'm going to pull a vacuum and we'll see what happens. bleeding off slowly and it could be because of this rig up job I have up here this is not a perfect science but I go real high Okay, so there's my uh, vacuum I'm holding. This part of the video is almost pointless if I'm not holding vacuum because I'll uh, find out if it's this little step down gizmo I got going on here. I wonder if I could hear it. if you can watch the gauge and I open the open this up right here the gauge will go to zero like plummet there we go close it again open the Cut off again and it goes to zero. It's holding pretty strong. I 
I'm not 100% convinced yet. Yeah, it's bleeding down very slowly. I bet the bleed down is coming from this whole transition thing I did here. I, I glued this, but I could have a, a problem. It could be an issue with this. Check something. Let me solve that right. My suspicions right now. I'll just turn this hose down a little bit. Now it's a new connection. Let's eliminate that probable fault. It's still coming down. I'm holding vacuum though. So tell you what guys, if it leaks, I'll be back. If it doesn't leak, that'll be the last you see of this video. Um, but I think it's secure. We shall see. Thank you.